In this video, I wanna tell you about the top five things to do here in Cache Turkey. Stick around to the end and I'll have a sixth bonus tip. Hey there, Ralph Velasco of the Continental Drifter where I share simple but powerful tips designed to make your travels easier and your photography even better. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and know that everything I talk about will be linked in the description below. All right, let's do this. The following is a list of the top five things I suggest that you do in Cache Turkey. Cache's old town is rather small, but that's what makes it so intimate and wonderfully walkable. The old town is mostly pedestrian only, which I love, and it's made up of a good sized central square with lots of open space and then a number of small streets that radiate in all directions. The old town is situated right on the harbor where all the commercial fishing and tour boats dock, and this is a great sight to see especially early in the morning or later in the evening when the light is almost always perfect. There are countless shops, tourist offices, restaurants, and cafes where you can enjoy a strong Turkish coffee, a cold Efes beer, a glass of wine, or even the local raki, also known as lion's milk and made up of twice distilled grapes and aniseed. I love raki. You pour the raki over ice, then simply add water to create a cloudy, milky drink that is just as strong as it is refreshing. Once here, you'll certainly want to stroll up Dogrulio Street for some great window shopping. And at the end of this street, you'll be met by a more than 2,000 year old structure called the King's Tomb. This style of Lycian tomb can be seen all over this part of Turkey. The King's Tomb is located right outside my friend's sonar shop called ASG Carpet, the go-to place if you'd like to do some low-pressure shopping for high-quality carpets while you're in town. One of my absolute favorite things to do in cash is to go visit the Antifellos Theater for Sunrise. Although sunset is definitely more popular and just as impressive, it's so nice to be able to enjoy a site like this with few if any people around, which allowed me to capture quite a bit of video with spectacular clouds. At one time, this part of Turkey was actually a part of Greece, and Antifelos was a small settlement and acted as the port for Phelos, a much larger Lycian town further north in the hills. This small Hellenistic theater located about 500 meters west of Cash's main square and just about 50 meters from my hotel could seat up to 4,000 spectators and is in really good condition till this day. Built in the first century BC, it was restored 300 years later, probably after the great earthquake of 141 AD. And out in the distance, you can see the Greek island of Castellorizzo, referred to as mice in Turkish. Get here early for sunrise and have the place mostly to yourself. Or if you're more social, do show up just before sunset to view the evening spectacle with others enjoying an impromptu picnic and perhaps a few drinks. I also recommend exploring a bit around the theater as there are some really great viewpoints from this high up. Whenever I travel, I like to know the market days in the towns I'm visiting. And so it's really important to know that Friday is market day in cash. I'll even arrange my travels around these special days in certain places because I love markets that much. They afford a great opportunity to mingle and chat with the locals. And I just love the colorful displays of fruits and vegetables. And the food made there is always some of the best. Cash's market doesn't disappoint and is held just behind the city bus station next to an interesting cemetery that's worth a visit. The market is a great place to pick up fresh fruits and vegetables, cheeses, homemade breads, as well as locally made honey and airan, which is a sort of thin yogurt beverage consumed daily by the Turks and another drink I just fell in love with. 
There are also huge displays of dried fruits, Turkish delights, and other candies. Of course, there's a clothing section as well, and areas where you can buy shampoo, soap, tools, and more. One man even has as his spot one of the 2,000-year-old Lycian tombs that he uses as a backrest and I'm sure is a landmark to find his stall. There's also a great section of the market where several families set up temporary restaurants serving all the local specialties, including cheese breads, pita, which is a local pizza-like staple, fresh squeezed juices, coffee, and more. This is a high quality and really expensive place to grab a meal. And I found the people working both here in the restaurant area and in the market itself to be really friendly and very open to being photographed. If there's one thing that really surprised me on this visit to Turkey, it was my enjoyment of the beaches. I'm not known for sitting around on a beach with lots of other people where you have to pay for a chair and or umbrella. And before this trip, I wasn't at all fond of beaches made up of big pebbles or stones, but I was pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoyed the beach in cash. I really appreciated not bringing home sand in every nook and cranny. Now, the beach I had the most experience with is about a 15 to 20 minute walk from the center along a safe road with wide sidewalks. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce this beach's name, so here it is. But it's a beautiful walk past countless orange and other fruit trees with gorgeous views of the harbor along the way. At the narrowest point heading out to the peninsula, there are actually two beaches separated by only the road. This one and another one across the way called Halk Plaji, which is less formal and mostly self-service. On the other side, however, is a lovely cove with beautiful water made up of every shade of blue. There are ample lounge chairs costing from 10 to 25 Turkish liras each, depending on the season, your negotiating skills, and whether or not you are a local. Ask for a discount, especially if there aren't a lot of other people there and you plan to buy some food and drink. During the high season, plan to get there early as this beach will certainly fill up and you'll want to get a good spot. If you're driving, it's even more important to arrive early as there's very limited parking, and I'd recommend walking anyways. They do have food and beverage service on the beach with waiters taking orders for coffee, beer, light food items, and more. The water itself is very clean and you can see at least 10 meters down to the bottom in some places. But when I was there in October and November, there were a lot of warm and cold thermal climbs in the water. So be prepared for that, although it was incredibly refreshing. If you're at all a beach goer, then there's definitely a beach in cash for you. One of the sites that I wanted to make time to see was the Akdam Doric tomb, which dates back to the fourth century BC. Over the course of the six weeks that I was in cash, I could see it from almost every angle, sitting there prominently on the side of a large hill very close to the Antifellos Theater and just waiting for me to explore. I kept saying I was gonna get there, but it took until about the last week of my trip for me to make it happen, but I'm so glad I did. Easily accessed from one of the side roads in town, sort of behind the Migro supermarket, the Akdam Doric tomb is a short but somewhat steep hike away. There's a lot of loose gravel and bigger stones, so be sure to wear good sturdy shoes if you go there and make sure that you bring water. On the way, you'll walk by thick bushes and cactus, past a number of private houses, and you're sure to see a few of the friendly local dogs, cats, and chickens standing guard. But just keep going up the path and you'll eventually end up at this small but impressive site. You're likely to have the place entirely to yourself, so feel free to hang out, explore, and enjoy the beautiful views over Cache and the sea. If you're a bit more ambitious, you can certainly continue your way just a bit further up to get to the highest point for 360 degree views over Cache, the Mediterranean Sea, the local harbors, and more. 
And because you're so close to the Auntie Fellows Theater at this point, a visit there is an easy add-on. Okay, so here's your bonus tip number six, and you're definitely gonna like this one. Take an inexpensive taxi or make the long hike up to the flag at sunset. Now, it's my understanding there's no official name for this place, but it's the biggest and highest flag you'll see waving above cash, so you can't miss it. Every taxi driver will know the way. It's definitely worth the effort to get up to the flag just before sunset, and not only to find a good spot to enjoy the views, but also to give yourself time to set up a blanket, break out some wine or cold drinks and some food, and to get some gorgeous photos and video of the incredible nightly spectacle that is sunset in cash. There'll surely be other people up there enjoying the view as well. And they might even invite you into their little fun bubble and let you keep warm by their fire. I was in cash for almost six weeks and I can count on one hand the nights where there was a disappointing sunset. It almost always delivered. So any night you go should be great. Although I suggest you go when there are clouds so that the sun has something to reflect off of, like this. This is just the beginning of the content I made in Turkey. So look for future videos on the many other things I did and saw, including a boat trip to Kekova, as well as an introduction to the food in Turkey, with a visit to a place with the most amazing Turkish breakfast known as Mother Nature's Hand. Question of the day, have you been to Turkey? Have you had a chance to visit Kash or other parts of the Mediterranean coast in this area? Let us know in the comments below. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video of my top five things to do here in Kash, Turkey. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Head on over to the continentaldrifter.co website, get my free download, join our Facebook group, and remember drifters, life's too short not to travel.